Hello friends, it's Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and today we're looking at the Qubit Data Bender. Point at it. There it is. Data Bender is a circuit-bent digital audio buffer. It is something that will mess up your audio in all kinds of fun ways, and today we're going to run through it with some other modules. I'm pointing at those now. All right, cool. Let's zoom in and uh, look at Data Bender. Zoom in now, I think, maybe? Yay, there it is. Oh god. Uh, okay. So we're going to be using this drum beat to listen to Data Bender. You can see that I'm getting clock right now, but I'm going to turn this off real quick so you can hear how the time knob works with a no clock. It's a smooth transition to sample the audio coming in in milliseconds, and it relates to how the repeat thing will chop up the audio. Time is when the audio is sampled, and repeats is some chops within that sampling. I like to clock it, though. Push the clock button. You can see that now we are clocked. I also have a gate that hits every eight bars going into the corrupt input, and uh, that tells the clock to reset every eight bars so that it, uh, when I change the timing, it will glom onto the new clock. So the time, you can see now we're sampling every certain amount of time, and that will affect how these other controls work. Repeats are slices within that. And there's obviously a relationship in terms of the tempo with those. So you can already hear how we can get some pretty cool sort of stutter effects just with time and repeat. Let's put in some CV to repeats and hear what happens when you have it jump around with some, uh, you know, stepped random voltage. I'm gonna turn it all the way down so that the positive voltage affects it. You can hear how quickly those ratchets are happening. If I turn down the time, they'll be slower. There's a relationship between time, repeats, and the clock, yeah. Next, I want to talk about the corrupt effect. The corrupt effect has three modes, and the first one is a bit crusher sample reducer that can get real crunchy and nasty. Some really fantastic artifacts to be had here. Like that. Let's go ahead and put some CV into this again and hear what happens when we have both of these being modulated. Already we're getting a pretty awesome derivation on our original drum loop. The cool thing about the corrupt effect uh, in this mode is that it's not a linear progression from like least to most, it's like different flavors of bit crushing. The next corrupt mode is uh, called dropout, I believe, and I don't really like it that much, but uh, it kind of sounds like a bad buffer, like if you have a sample rate mismatch. I can see it being useful for certain noise, but uh, I don't really use it that much. I do, however, use the next one, which is a saturator overdrive. Oh, it's so good. Let's get some CV in there and hear what it sounds like being modulated. Even if you don't use the stutter effects, just having the bit crusher and the saturator in here make a really, really great color effects module. Cool. Now that we've heard the corrupt modes, let's jump into the main effect modes. Bend first. Right here. Bend. Turned on to the left, nothing will happen. But as we turn it up, 
we're gonna hear some time slipping around, almost like a very speed effect. The timing in which these slices and, and things are happening is related to the clock and our time knob. Listen to what happens when I change this. The buffer affects how the effect happens. All the way on the right, you can hear a lot more of that very speed effect. Very cool. Let's get some CV in there again and hear what happens when this is getting pushed around by some robots. Here we're actually getting those really cool tonal glitches, which I think are really, really a nice feature of this effect. Next up is the brake control. This is kind of like a uh, malfunctioning digital audio device, and it's gonna move through the buffer and create aliasing. Of course, it's related to the time and repeat knob as well. Almost sounds like a uh, like digital noise in a uh, in an RF signal. And this is all stuff in conjunction. There are so many sweet spots in the data bender that uh, just playing around will, <laughs> yeah, you'll get fun stuff. There's something wrong with my modem. Let's see if we can fix it. Yeah. Some more CV in there. Yes. I'm holding down the freeze button with my big meaty not see through hand right now and moving through the buffer. The freeze button will freeze the buffer, but you can still affect it with the controls, which is really cool. All right, we're gonna move on to micro mode in a second, but first I wanna play you a little ambient interlude so you don't get tired of this beat. Yes. Okay, so what you're hearing right now is four samples coming out of the Squarp Rample. I'm gonna get out of the way of talking for a second, but I'm gonna start bringing in the data bender and then I'm gonna add some reverb.
All right, let's explore a micro mode. If I press the upper right mode button, I change from macro mode to micro mode, which changes bend into a, basically like a playback machine uh, with different speeds and directions. When you see a brighter color on there, you know that you are basically like an octave above or below. And yes, it's all related to the clock speed. The clock is still going to dictate when the audio buffer is sampled, basically. See, now I'm at center, which means I'm at unity, basically. If I press the bend button in this context, it will go reverse. But we're gonna add some CV to this before we uh, move on to that. All right, let's reverse. This is one of my favorite things. Instant vibe. So it's reversing the incoming audio, sampling it based on the time and the clock. Break in micro mode allows us to traverse the buffer that is being sampled. Buffer, we can traverse it. So it'll be more obvious uh, once I go 100% wet. So you can hear we're sort of moving through the buffer from beginning to end, which allows you to create some pretty unique events. There's also a mode you can put this in where it will silence the buffer, but I haven't really played around with that. I think Traverse is probably the more interesting of the two. There's some really interesting shift functions that allow you to actually change the windowing of the glitch to very hard or very soft, depending on what kind of material passing through it. And you can change the behavior of how freeze and corrupt inputs work. Break at just the right place and bend, you can create off kilter rhythms like this swung sort of corrupted thing. Something's wrong with my modem. 
Let me see if I can fix it. Fix it. Remember when this was a drum beat? Lol. It's a little interlude with some choral samples going into it. Sort of chopping them up and giving them a little bit of digital edge. In this final example, I'll make some music. We'll be passing rings into the data bender. I'm not going to talk for most of this, but I just want to let you know that we've got drums coming from the QD drum machine. We're going to be bringing in the rings thing here, and then we're going to be manipulating it in a bunch of different ways. Baseline's going to come from plots, and we're going to add some reverb from the monsoon. I'll check in with you after this is done.
Hey, it's me. I'm back. Sorry, I didn't mean to surprise you. I hope you enjoyed that. I have a whole bunch of uh, raw demos over on my second channel, so check the link in the description for those. Some drum and bass stuff. And something with the 4MS Ensemble Oscillator. I would wholeheartedly recommend the Qubit Data Bender to anyone who enjoys the sound of glitch. It's a pretty unique module, and it's one of those things that, you know, I would even love in a VST. Uh, it presents itself very, very well, and it's very, very fun for a lot of different kinds of genres. Anyways, thanks for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a very bent day.